oil in the house. Man, I've been admiring you for so long. Well, you're very kind. I've been watching you on the media, and I think you are doing a hell of a job, I'll tell you. How are you holding up? I guess the reality, this is going to hit me when it's all over and all my men are safe. When you get to the point where you become oblivious, of it, that's when it's sad. When you're walking in stench and urine of 30,000 people, and you're seeing babies die, it was crazy, Dr. Phil. I know you're chief of police, but you're also a father. What did it mean to you when you heard she was safe? When I saw my daughter's face, Dr. Phil, I cried. You know, and my, my guys had never seen me cry like that before. I can tell you from a leadership position, for them to see that in you, it gives them permission to do that themselves. And they're all looking at you and saying, okay, are we supposed to pretend that this isn't more than we can handle? And they say, no, you, you see a, a man that's got the courage to be real, I guarantee you it is the best and, and strongest thing you can do for those guys. That was footage from Katrina in uh, 2005. Uh, you know, after a natural disaster subsides, what is left can be really a deafening silence, leaving the reality of what happened to sink in. Danielle says trying to survive uh, after Hurricane Ian has just been a terrible, terrible struggle. The water took over everything. We also visited a neighborhood here in Fort Myers that was flooded. The residents told us the water was up to eight feet high in some places. And although much of the water has receded, the trauma remains. My family was impacted greatly by Hurricane Ian. And I am struggling. My emotions are all over the place. I'm hurting. I'm angry. I'm sad. I spent nights not sleeping. I still have anxiety when it's raining. I feel so much guilt as a mom. The fact that I broke down while trying to figure out how to keep my two disabled kids safe while our house was flooding. I feel like my life before the storm was erased. You say you have tremendous guilt because you, you say you feel like you failed your boys as a mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How so? I made the ultimate decision to stay in our house. Um, once the hurricane was over, I wasn't going to be able to provide them with a place to live. My house still isn't put back together. Many aren't. Um, you know, with their disability, I've been their sole provider. I've made all of the decisions. I've taken care of them since they were babies, most of the time on my own. And um, this time I got the decision wrong and it could have cost us all our lives. Let's play the what if game for a minute. Uh, Cause I know you- I've been you, playing that a lot. <laughs> oh yes, I, I know you have. Cause I've been, I've looked at your videos. I've read everything that you've said. And you, you play the what if game uh, but um, you don't know what would have happened uh, if you left. You, you, yeah. you have two special needs uh, sons. It, it's not like turn around to the kids, say, y'all get in the car, we're out of here. Right. You have to do a lot of things, a, a lot of logistics in getting these kids prepared to leave and being able to take care of them when you get to wherever you're going. So Right, which is not always a great thing, trying to find a place that can accommodate our needs. That's right. So you can play the what if game because everybody's going to. Uh, my only request is when you do it, you play it out to the end. If you're going to play what if, then let's play it to the end. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.